the Great Lakes, inland seas that can be as sudden and violent as the oceans. Some say that more than 25,000 ships lie here. Local mariners will tell you that these open waters are no place for a 16-foot boat. I call these seas home, their demonic murkiness and their azure placid calm. This is the story of my humble 66-mile journey on a dinghy through her remote open waters to a place affectionately called the Emerald Isle, once ruled by a Mormon king, a place where things are in island time and people still wave when they drive past. This is the Beaver Island Expedition. But first, it's time for a little debauchery in the fudgy capital of the world. Mackinac City is a quadfecta powerhouse of slurpy food, history, sights, and sounds. Called the Gateway to the Upper Peninsula, it's an anchor for the third largest suspension bridge in the U.S. Almost 800 call Mackinac home, but almost 20,000 people visit each day. It's famous for its creative fudge, colorful saltwater toffee, and its family-owned restaurant fare. As a kid, I would set talon claw to the seat of my parents' car, straining to see the towers of the bridge ahead. You can find a train ride, local cover bands, distilleries, haunted houses, everything an angry middle-aged man would want to escape the world for a couple hours. Today I came to sip whiskey and watch people. If you're thirsting for some history, you can visit two colonial era forts. Fort Mackinac's across the straits and on the mainland are the wood palisades of Fort Michela Mackinac cannons and muskets fire every couple hours and you can help haul an artillery piece around the parade grounds. We're a new way to take over a fort with my trusty volunteers. Apparently it's British have us hauling cannons now. Mackinac City is a place for the family to lose itself in the warm summer breezes and to spend a lot of money. The sun was setting and I had my fill of food and whiskey. So it was time to head back to camp with a quick stop at the curious roadside portage on and a last minute resupply at the Cecil Bay trading post. I returned to the state park campground. The slamming doors, the charming screeches of children, and the relaxing scent of a hundred closely spaced campfires. It was time to see if I could fall asleep in the noisy chaos that is a modern campground. Tomorrow will be another day. Saturday morning and uh, beautifully sunny and it's calm right here but I guess around the point we start to uh, the wind starts to pick up it's a little it's worse than forecasted of course so yeah whatever but uh, I think we're ready to go there's the uh, there's the situation I gotta organize it a little bit but uh, boats in the water the sun is up uh, it's about 640 on Saturday morning I don't know if you can see the Mackinac Bridge it's probably just a really big bright spot there, but the Mackinac Bridge is uh, kind of off into the, uh, so we can do this, whoop, whoop, Mackinac Bridge is right there. Anyway, so we're off to, uh, see if we can make it to Beaver Island, see what the conditions are out there in the big lake, so uh, I'll keep you posted. The options for launching for the western straits of Mackinac are sparse. St. Ignace has some launches on the other side of the bridge. Mackinac City has a couple. There's a shallow launch at McGulpin Rock that involves backing a few hundred feet into Lake Michigan. But they are all miles from the Western Straits. Wilderness State Park has a boat launch for medium-sized boats and lots of campsites, all usually full in the summer. The park also boasts a strong winter season with miles of groomed ski trails and a collection of rustic cabins with plenty of firewood. The summer season is like any other at a state park, crowded at the campgrounds and a little less crowded on the trails. For the restless, you can hike and swim far west to Wagashans Island. 
The Wilderness Bolt Launch is the closest you can get to what I call the Three Shoals. Three crib lighthouses forever adrift in a blue expanse of northern Lake Michigan. I chose the Wilderness Bolt Launch so I could visit our first destination, the Wagashant's Light Station. About 45 minutes or 13 miles from the launch, a solitary ghostly monolith still stands stubborn to the elements, even after a long history of neglect and abuse. This is the Wagashant's light station. It was built more than a decade before the Civil War as one of the first Great Lakes light stations completely surrounded by water. Then it was decommissioned in 1912 and the lighthouse was left open through the 1930s for anyone to enter. Then, during World War II, the U.S. Navy opened naval bases in the Great Lakes for training its aviators. Two side-wheel steamships were topped with aircraft carrier decks, the USS Sable and Wolverine, and started training pilots on Lake Michigan. In 1942, a guy named David Sarnoff from RCA Radio pitched an idea of using television cameras and remote control to fly the first military drones. That same year, the USS Sable was deployed to the Mackinac Straits loaded with these drones. The Wagashant's light was deeded from the state of Michigan to the federal government and in 1942, Navy drones started flying missions in northern Lake Michigan. The drones dropped bombs, torpedoes, and even crashed into the lighthouse. By 1944, the program was ready and the new drones, called TDN-3s, were deployed in combat. Soon after, the war ended and the program was scrapped. For years, the wreckage and unexploded bombs lay at the bottom. Then, in 2005, the Navy finally detonated the inert bombs and declared the area safe. Today, after all the abuse and neglect, almost 170 years after she was built, Wagashant still stands, an empty, haunting hulk. It is considered one of the most endangered lighthouses in the United States. So we have just passed Waukeshaunt's Lighthouse a little while ago, we're on our way to Gray's Reef, we're approaching Gray's Reef Lighthouse, and we're about a mile away. Um, beautiful, cloudy day, a little choppy. When you get the uh, when you get the old zodiac going, it gets a little choppy. Um, there is Gray's Reef Lighthouse. I don't know if you can see that on the map, but. Uh, they are moving along, I can see, I think, High Island over there, way off in the distance, so um, it's coming along.
So we are in the open water right now. We see a couple boats past the sailboat, uh, past Gray's Reef and Waukeshaunce. And uh, I can see some detail on uh, High Island. I don't know if you guys can see it. Or Hog Island. Um, Hog Island, whatever it's called. Um, I can see some detail on there, so that's good. But I think I see the outline of uh, Beaver Island way off in the distance. So everything's going pretty well. It's a little choppy, about uh, two to four footers. Um, the engine was uh, kind of sputtering a little bit there. It dropped, from, it dropped a couple thousand RPM, and that was a bit of a concern. But it looks like that the uh, hose was just bent. On the gas tank, it was pushing up against the battery, so i got to figure out a solution for that. Um, I stuffed something behind it to kind of support it, but uh, we'll see. But it's a blast. Uh, the open water is pretty awesome. Surrounded by nothing but loneliness. I can still see Gray's Reef and Waukeshaunce, and off in the distance I can see White Shoal. I'll be visiting that in a couple weeks, a few weeks. So, uh, sun's kind of coming out, coming in. Skies are partly cloudy. We're having a blast. Uh, we'll see you a little later. I was minding my own business, see the sloop, minding my own business, and then suddenly it got rough, rough enough. Engine shut off, my knee hit the key, Hogue is off to our left, Beaver's in front of us, we just passed the sloop, I think they got, I think they're talking about me, I don't know, but uh, yeah, so we're almost there, but uh, Suddenly it got a little real choppy real quick, so it was going really good until then, but uh, yeah, so uh, onward, sailing onward. In 1844, seven years before the construction of Waukeshaunce Light, a man named Joseph Smith was murdered. Smith was the founder of the Restorational Christian Movement, sometimes called the Mormons. There was a struggle for leadership of his church. Brigham Young assumed leadership and founded the Church of Latter-day Saints. A man named James Strang also assumed leadership and founded Church of Latter-day Saints. The difference? The word the and a hyphen. Anyway, Young took his 50,000 followers to the Salt Lake Valley in Utah and formed his well-known LDS church. James Strang took 12,000 followers and went to Beaver Island, forming a smaller rival church. Over the next 12 years, Strang and his followers settled a large portion of Beaver Island. In 1850, James Strang, wearing a red flannel robe with white collar, a crown made of tin with glass stars, a breastplate, and carrying a wooden scepter, was crowned a theocratic king of his church. Even though Strang never claimed to be king of Beaver Island, his influence and control of local politics gave the impression that he was, in fact, king of the island. But it gets more interesting. King Strang became very unpopular with locals who were subject to control of his church. He was also hated by excommunicated members. In 1856, a handful of the church's ex-members gathered on Mackinac Island to conspire and train for the king's assassination. On the evening of June 15th, on the docks of St. James, in full view of the public in a U.S. Navy ship called the USS Wolverine, King Strang was shot three times and brutally pistol-whipped. Then the assailants actually boarded the USS Wolverine and claimed sanctuary. They were then transported to Mackinac Island, put on trial, and fined $1.25 and released. After his assassination, Strang's church collapsed and Irish immigrants moved in to resettle much of the island. Today this Emerald Isle is laid back with eclectic residents, a friendly attitude, and a rich history. It is the largest island in Lake Michigan and an interesting place. If you ever get a chance, take a journey to an island that slows time and where everyone waves. You can arrive by ferry or charter plane to visit.
Landing in Beaver Island. Still the boat at the Beaver Island Marina. And we're on a big backpack with valuable boating gear that really doesn't need to be hauled. But you know, I'll leave it the boat, I guess. We're walking to town. And we'll walk and get our township campsite. Got a couple friends here on Beaver and see what they're up to. Go establish the campsite and come back to the bar. Get to get something to eat. I'm kind of hungry. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. We made it. Bye.